Hey everyone, so today we're going to be having a look at cells and we have three main intentions for today. So we want to define what is meant by a cell, describe similarities and differences between plant and animal cells and then describe the levels of organisation in living things. So when we have a look at animal and plant cells, we'll notice between both of these diagrams that both of them have a lot of the same structures. So we can see that both of them have a nucleus, both of them will have a cell membrane which is here and both of them also have a cytoplasm. And we'll be going through each one of those individually. So it's important to notice though that when we have a look at the animal cell, generally all animal cells are irregular shaped. So we could have animal cells that look something like this, whereas plant cells are always regular shaped. So they'll always be generally a rectangular form to give them a little bit of extra structure. So the first stru uh, structure that was common to both of those was the cell membrane. So if we have a look at the location of the cell membrane in both of the cells, it actually surrounds the cell in both of them. So it's on the outside. So the cell membrane will always surround the cell and it controls what enters and leaves the cell. So it can control the amount of water that's getting in and out of the cell. And it can also control what type of nutrients are getting in and out of the cell. So the second thing which we're gonna have a look at then is we're having a look at the cytoplasm. And if we have a look at the cytoplasm, it's always this structure that's on the inside of the cells. So the cytoplasm is a jelly-like substance and it suspends or holds up all of the other organelles or structures that are in the cell. So for example, it will hold up the nucleus in the animal cell and it will hold up the nucleus and these structures called chloroplasts and vacuoles in the plant cell as well. So those vacuoles that I just mentioned are found actually in both of the plant and animal cell and they're used for storage. So animal cells have very small vacuoles, so sometimes they're not labeled like they aren't in this diagram here. Whereas plant cells have large vacuoles, which is this structure up here. And sometimes it can actually take up 90% of the space inside a cell. So when I say vacuoles are used for storage, they're used to store things like water, food, and also used sometimes to store waste as well. So the nucleus then, is this structure in both of the cells, and that's described as being the control center of the cell. So it contains all of the genetic material or all of the DNA within a cell. So plant cells are a little bit particular because they have a couple of extra structures that animal cells don't have. So two of the main structures that they have that animal cells don't have are a cell wall and a chloroplast. So if we have a look, Firstly, we had the cell membrane, which we knew surrounded the cell, but the plant cell wall also surrounds the cell and it's outside the cell membrane. So it's the very outside layer of a plant cell. And what that actually does is it strengthens the cell and it's always going to be found outside the cell membrane. So the chloroplast then, it contains chlorophyll, which absorbs the sunlight for photosynthesis. So plants are autotrophs, so they make their own food and because of that, they need to absorb as much sunlight as possible. So the chloroplasts, which are these structures over here, are responsible for absorbing all of the sunlight that it might need for photosynthesis. So we can summarize what we're after having a look at there by drawing a Venn diagram. So within Venn diagrams, we know that anything that's in the center is common to both the plant and the animal cells. So we can see that the cell membrane, the nucleus, the vacuoles, and the cytoplasm are common to animal and plant cells. But the plant cell has a cell wall, the animal cell doesn't have that, and the plant cell also has a chloroplast, but the animal cell doesn't have that either. So when we talk about organisms which are living things, we can talk about them as being unicellular, or we can talk about them as being multicellular. So anything that is unicellular, the word uni means one, so that means they're composed of only one cell. So examples of that would include bacteria, which is seen in the diagram down here, and also yeast. And then on the other hand, if we talk about something that's multicellular, that means that they're composed of many cells. So examples of this would include us as humans, because we actually contain millions of cells. So all of this then can be summarized into different levels of organization. So cells are what's called the basic units of life. So they will be the bottom of the pyramid. Once we move up from that though, if we have a group of cells working together to carry out the same job, we end up 
with a tissue. The next level up from that then, if we have a group of tissues working together to form the same job, we will have an organ. And then if we have a group of organs working together to perform the same job, we have what's called an organ system. And then finally, if we have a group of systems working together to carry out the same job, we're going to end up with an organism. So all of that then, so all of that then can be summarized into this table here. So our basic unit or level of organization is our cell. And an example of that over here would be our red blood cells. Once we move from a cell, we move up to a tissue, which is a group of cells working together to perform the same job. And an example of a tissue would be blood tissue because it's composed of numerous cells. So we have our red blood cell, we have our white blood cells, our platelets, and we also have our plasma in there as well. Building on from that, then our next level is an organ. So an example of that would be our heart. We also have things like our kidneys, our skin, our brain, and so on. After that, we have an organ system. So our red blood cells, our blood and our heart, they are all part of the circulatory system. And then finally, once we have a group of systems working together, we end up with an organism, which would be something like us, which is a human. To recap what we had today then, we wanted to define what is meant by a cell. We wanted to describe similarities and differences between plant and animal cells. And we wanted to describe the levels of organisation in living things.